you know, we, we also sort of teased a little bit at uh, where to go next. Um, you, you, I can say that the panel has sort of described the landscape. And from a policymaker's perspective, the question is, okay. Um, I also hear people suggesting that there are some issues that we find on this landscape and how ought policy be used to shape the landscape. Um, and I, I use uh, that term, shaping the landscape, very intentionally. Uh, within the Obama administration, uh, we've got um, also the, the, the theme of nudging um, uh, the marketplace along, not necessarily regulating, uh, because regulating has such a bad connotation, sounds heavy-handed, sounds overly intrusive. Uh, but I think we recognize that smart policy uh, can be developed and might be able to nudge the landscape in, in, in the right direction. Uh, so how do we do that? Um, we've, in this panel, we've talked about issues at a high level, and maybe through the rest of the conversation, we can dig into some of them uh, and, and get to a little bit more granular level so that those in the audience and those watching the tape can, can get some insights into the specifics of specific issues. Um, I think staying at a high level, uh, what we find across the panel is, is a recognition that while there may be uh, issues around uh, privacy, issues around cybersecurity, uh, issues, I agree with John on this point, issues around free speech around the world. Um, we also know that sort of across the space, there is a fear of balkanization, balkanization globally. And uh, it's a, it's, that's a chronic fear on the internet, but I think the cloud uh, and this new generation of technology uh, sort of increases the stakes uh, with respect to balkanization challenges. Um, you know, if we go back to what I refer to and we at the Commerce Department refer to as version 1.0 of Internet policy, um, those set of policies evolved in the 1990s. Uh, the balkanization issue, uh, you know, yeah, you could talk about global balkanization, but really we're, we were mostly focused on balkanization among the 50 states. Uh, I would say that that remains a concern. Um, but when, it, when you talk about the cloud and when you talk about uh, new capabilities associated with the cloud, uh, the biggest concern we're hearing from, from the U.S. companies that are really leading in this space, be they small companies or, or the service providers, the cloud service providers, is about balkanization globally. Um, that, that's a tough tension to deal with. You know, how do we shape the policy landscape in privacy, cybersecurity, et cetera, and also uh, do so in a way that um, uh, uh, it, uh, works against forces uh, that might lead to balkanization. That's a tough challenge, and hopefully uh, with the remainder of the hour we can get into that a little bit. Um, I should say that uh, at the Commerce Department, we're not just thinking about these challenges sort of in the abstract. Um, if you go back to uh, December of last year, um, across the street, actually, Secretary Locke gave some remarks at an OECD event where he talked about the evolution of the Internet, um, of how uh, in, in the version 1.0 era of Internet policy um, back in the 90s, we had a hands-off-the-Internet philosophy. Uh, philosophy. Becky Burr it was here a second ago. She was at the um, Commerce Department back then and was part of the team that developed uh, both a sort of a framework for global e-commerce and a bunch of white papers that flowed from it that justified that, you know, in those early stages of the Internet, government's role was to largely keep hands off. Um, but in the Secretary's remarks last December, uh, the Secretary was, was, you know, upfront about the fact that, you know, it's not the 90s Internet anymore. You know, globally, we have billions of users, and that number is you know, growing by leaps and bounds every day. We have a phenomenally different range of ways to access the Internet, uh, ways to use the Internet. You know, Jonathan's um, listing of the different applications that are out there was very, uh, a good example of, of the range. And um, this whole discussion talks about how we're now truly globally interconnected. It's not a theory anymore. And so it's, it's a different Internet. And um, while our philosophy is, uh, um, still do no harm, I think the policy challenge is, is ha, ha, that might not necessarily translate into do nothing. 
So, for example, a couple panelists have talked about ECBA reform. Well, that's not going to happen without uh, congressional action. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about uh, harmonization with Europe on data privacy rules. Um, we all know that the Europeans aren't particularly happy with some of our privacy rules. What's, what's the process for um, uh, um, uh, addressing that, that gap? Um, does it involve government action? Does it involve legislation? Uh, you know, is, are we calling for federal legislation in the privacy realm? Certainly folks on the Hill are. Um, and then how do you sell whatever nudges we, we roll out here in the United States internationally so that we actually move over the course of the next generation towards something that looks more harmonized? So the Commerce Department sort of springboarding off uh, the Secretary's comments last December has, over the course of the ensuing months, rolled out what we refer to as our Internet Policy Task Force. And our task force has four distinct work streams. And each is at different levels of maturation, um, but they each have as a goal identifying uh, the possible policy nudges that the Obama administration could adopt in this area. We have a work stream on privacy. Many of those in the audience and uh, at the table here have already participated in that. We have a work stream on cybersecurity. Uh, next Tuesday, in fact, we have a, a big symposium at the Reagan Center uh, where we're going to share views on the state of cybersecurity policy and what nudges to it might be necessary. Uh, we have a work stream on copyright protection and the role of intermediaries that uh, John Morris referred to crops up there. Uh, and then we have uh, a, a work stream on the free flow of information on the Internet, which sort of gets at this bigger international question and starts to catch, collect up some of the other issues that don't fall neatly in either the privacy, cybersecurity, or copyright realm. And our goal with the task force is to sometime in, in between the early fall and the late fall to roll out a, a set of green papers uh, that would articulate the Commerce Department's uh, well-considered uh, view on what policy nudges would be uh, beneficial in each of these four categories. And I also use the term green paper um, intentionally. Uh, it's borrowed from the Europeans. The notion is that we at the Commerce Department, we don't regulate. We at the Palm Commerce Dep Department don't legislate in these spaces. Uh, and our views feed up to the White House. So ultimately, policy guidance or policy direction will come, come from the White House. But we at the Commerce Department have a lot of talent, uh, a lot of depth of expertise in these areas, and we hope that over the course of the fall, we'll be able to make uh, material contributions to the policy dialogue in this area. 